Hey guys, welcome back to another episode on how to hack. So we are back to open web application security project, Muti the day two, and we're going to learn about JSON and how it could be manipulated by the hackers to be able to gain access into the site or run cross site scripting. All right. And many other different kind of attack methods that they could utilize once they managed to exploit the vulnerability. And we're back to Muti the day two, which is a vulnerable web application platform for us to learn all about ethical hacking all right on web application systems and of course the best part about this platform is that it actually detailed now all right owasp 2007 all the way to 2017 especially in the way that more modern web application technology could be coded in so in this case we're on firefox call linux and we have on this page in front of us pen test tool lookup.php so I can go ahead and select a pen test tool, like for example, any of the tools here, like Web Securify, and click on Lookup Tool. All right, so right here, we have the pen testing tools information. All right, so we have the tool ID, the tool name, the tool type, face used, and the comments. So what we can do next is to go to the top right corner and click under Preferences, all right, and scroll all the way down, all right, and click under Network Settings, under Settings, and set manual proxy configuration. Click OK on that. All right, so what we need to do next is to open up terminal and start a burp suite. All right, so go ahead and enter burp suite. And this will start up the community edition. All right, select temporary project. All right, so I'm not going to update now. And click next and use burp defaults. Click start burp. All right, so this will start the burp suite community edition. All right, so go under the proxy tab. All right, so make sure proxy is turned on. And what we can do now is to go ahead and select any of the tools again, click lookup tool, and we have the following information. Okay, so I can do a right click and send to repeater. Okay, and you see repeater blinking right here. All right, so what I'm going to do next is to open up magnifier so that it is easier for you to see. All right, so right here, all right, we have to post into this particular page. And right at the bottom, we have the PHP session ID and we have the tool ID. All right, followed by the page information. All right, all the PHP submit button. Okay, so when we click send, all right, we get the following information, which is the response. And what we need to look for specifically is called JSON. Okay, and of course, there's quite a number of tags that is like JSON, all right, and so on. So what this is not exactly what we're looking for. What we're looking for is right here, okay, right here. This is the part that we're looking for. Okay, so this is a variable and it's named G Pen Test Tools JSON String. And we have the following information. So we have the tool ID requested, pen test tools, all right, and all these different details. All right, so all these are the response coming in from this server, which will then later be displayed onto your browser. So this helps us go on to the next stage, which is so what exactly is JSON? So JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. So whenever you encounter all these complex technical terms, all we need to do is just break it down. So the first part stands for JavaScript. So JavaScript is a kind of scripting to change the way the features and functions of how users would interact with your website. Object Notation is just basically to list down items, as simple as that. So what are some examples of a JSON? All right. So here we have an example. So we have the users. Okay. In this case, we have like the first name, the last name. So we're storing data or we could be representing data that's coming from the database all the way to the web application server and then to the user's browser. Okay. So in this case, we have like the username or right, the first name, last name, first name, last name. So we have three rows. All right. Of records or objects. And next is we have the JSON examples. Okay, so in this case, we have like document get element. All right, so we have the object users and then we have the first name. So we're listing down the columns in each of the object. All right, so in this case, each role and each object. So as simple as that in terms of examples. All right, so next, what we can do is go back to Color Linux. And this is exactly how it's being represented. So I can go back to magnifier, turning on the magnifier. And we can see the following information. G pen test tools JSON string. And then we have the following values inside the JSON string. Okay. So when we click on to send from the request all the way to the response, these are the kind of feedback that we get all the time. Okay. So what we can do next is to actually all right, copy the following information. All right. So this is the following information that we have. All right. 
So we have the query and all these different details and data that we can try to do our injection on. Okay, so right click on this, copy, and we can go ahead and open up an editor. So that I've done already here using mouse pad. And okay, so this is what we're trying to do our attack on, right? Where we do our fuzzing on, where we try out different payloads, crafting specifically our payload to bypass how data is being displayed. So going back to Burp Suite, okay, we have to identify whether tool ID is susceptible, all right, to a kind of attack. So in this case, I'm just going to enter, for example, LOI. So we have one followed by LOI. All right, so go ahead and click send. All right, and go back to the JavaScript segment, all right, which is over here, JSON. And we can see the following information or the feedback. All right, so we have two ID requested, one followed by LOI, and then we have the tool ID one and the following results, which is web security and all those details, all those values. And this means that tool ID requested, all right, is susceptible to attack or manipulation because we can enter whatever value we want under tool ID and we'll get it as a feedback directly in the JSON string. Okay. So next, all right, next what we'll do is we have to now craft our payload. Okay, so in this case, we'll be targeting this particular field. All right. So what we can do next is to just clear everything out and towards the end. All right, so we need to first close off, all right, the statements. So we have a double quote, all right, that we can close off and the closing curly bracket and, and another closing curly bracket. So with this, we can try to insert alert all right and then followed by say one and try to close this off and next because we're in javascript so we can do a double slash to comment out the rest of the information all right so this helps us be able to craft the specific payload that we can then target and look out for potential cross-site scripting opportunities that we can inject into the web application system so go ahead and copy this payload that we have crafted copy it all right, and we can go back to Burp Suite Community Edition, okay? And we can now try to send the following information, okay? So let's go ahead and try to send the following information. All right, so right here, and I can do a right click, and I can paste it, all right? So right here on the tool ID, we have one followed by alert, okay? So go ahead and click send, all right? And we go back to JSON, into the JSON string, and look at the following details, all right? So we have one, and we have the closing, all right, we have the alert. Okay, so we can go to proxy and we can actually change the tool ID and we can paste our payload right here as well and go ahead and click forward and go to Firefox, all right? And right here, okay, we got a pop-up earlier. Okay, we got a pop-up earlier. And we can now select another pen test tool, all right? Go ahead and click look up tool and I can try to do a right click and paste the information, all right, with the alert, click forward all right, and it states the following, error trying to parse JSON, missing, all right, there's a missing in parenthetical, all right, so there's some issue. So what we need to do is to inject this part into the payload. So why is this the case? And we need to begin learning about tracing the web application or JavaScript code at list. So going back to Burp Suite Community Edition on the repeater, what we can do here is to really analyze a JavaScript that is right in front of us to look at the sequence of events that's happening and how the variables are being used. So in this case, we have variable, use save JSON parser, JavaScript validation, display error, and then we have the gpen test tools JSON string. Okay, so I can do a right click, copy, and I can paste it under search to find where is this variable now that it is being stored and what is it being used for and how is it displaying data. Okay, so click next. And right here, okay, it states the following, all right, so this is an if-else statement, so pretty straightforward. If the length is more than zero, so of course it is true, so we will step in, and it states the following. If g use save json parser is true, then we'll do the following. But of course, if we go back to the variable that was declared earlier, right here, json, all right, use json parser is false, okay? So it is not going to step in to this particular line of execution, all right? So it will go to else, all right, if else. And right here we have G pen test tools JSON, all right? And EVAL followed by a open bracket 
and then followed by the G pen test tools JSON string. So we need to insert this all right, into the payload in order to be able to complete the attack. All right, so right here, going back to our payload, all right, we just have to enter the following to close off the whole statement, all right, under EVAL. So with this new payload now, I can copy this, okay, I can copy it, and I can go back to Web Suite, okay, I can go to Proxy, go to Firefox, all right, and select any of the pen test tool, click Lookup tool, all right, and now I can insert my malicious payload or payload for cross-site scripting, paste it, all right, and click again, all right, onto forward. Go back to Firefox, and here we got it. All right, we got our cross-site scripting working, all right, as the JSON is being displayed and how we inject it, all right, to be able to manipulate the payload. And the resulting effect is that we can build all this cross-site scripting into the web application system, inject all this data, and when a legitimate user was to go into this actual site, they will be subjected to the scripts being imposed by the hackers or embedded by the hackers. So we need to always sanitize input. All inputs is coming into the web application server. You can also utilize web application firewall to check for such potentially malicious payloads is coming in outside of the band, outside of the values. So a lot of these checks can be done on the web application end, all right, not on the browser end, because we have seen from many tutorials in this channel that it's very easy for us to manipulate the controls on the client browser. More importantly is what happens once it is being submitted, all right? Once it is being submitted, do we have some kind of sanitization, some kind of verification check against all those payloads is coming in that could be malicious. All right. So once again, I hope you've learned something valuable in today's tutorial. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll try my best to answer any of your questions. And we'll like, share and subscribe to the channel so that you can be kept abreast of the latest cybersecurity tutorial. Thank you so much once again for watching.